actually seeing is the systematic implementation of the fall of the republic and the rise of the corporation of the United States. Every major event is, is a step in the ladder to achieve that end. COVID is just another rung in the ladder, which is why there's a deliberate mixing of all the wordplay, right? I mean, we should stop calling it, you know, quarantine. That's a term designated for people that are verified sick. This is a house arrest mandated by the state. You should stop calling it, you know, social distancing. There's nothing social about forced isolation. Uh, we should stop saying safer at home when millions of Americans don't have basic necessities adequate to fit their needs. It assumes that everybody's home is equally as safe as the people that are making the statements. We should stop saying, you know, uh, this is for the greater good. Right. When you close the economy, killing millions of businesses that families have worked generations to establish, that's anything but good. We should stop saying this is the new normal. That's just blatant mind control drivel. There's nothing normal about forced isolation, you know, treating your neighbor like they have the plague, breathing your own bodily waste, wearing masks, living in constant fear of contamination. That's normal. I mean, after all, if the virus is so deadly, why hasn't it wiped out the homeless who don't social distance, wash themselves regularly, let alone, you know, live in or have access to a sterile environment? Last year, 1.5 million people died of tuberculosis. Why were you not wearing a mask during the tuberculosis pandemic? You were endangering, you know, public health and safety, along with billions of other uh, people around the globe. So why didn't you wear a mask? I'll tell you why. Because the mainstream media didn't tell you to wear a mask. <laughs> right? And so because, because though 1.5 million people died from tuberculosis, there was no tuberculosis pandemic. Any more than there's a coronavirus pandemic. What you're really participating in is a beta test for AI systems and facial recognition. See, these cameras work best when people are, you know, distance apart. Now that they're, now they're actually testing through machine learning how to recognize, you know, a face that's partially covered. It's also a way to easily determine who's compliant and who's not. Who does the propaganda work on and who it doesn't? Now get this, you know, there there's some ironies that are here, right? A, so, a society that kills millions of babies a year for convenience has shut itself down to prevent adults from dying. People that on the one hand slaughter babies in the womb by the millions are now preaching uh, to the masses about the, the sanctity of human life. It's double speak, double talk. It's the, two, it's the two doctrine policy. One for the initiated, one for the uninitiated. One for the inner circle, another for the masses. It's like saying, you know, if I violate the stay at home order, I can be arrested. But you're letting convicted criminals out of prison so they don't get coronavirus. Thesis. Antithesis. Synthesis. If there's a real pandemic, does it require, you know, uh, faulty virus models, rigged test results, 81% false positives, inaccurate news reporting, staged hospital overruns, manipulated death certificates? Nope. You know, when the government shuts down you know, millions of small businesses but doesn't lay off any government employees, it's not about the health. Hmm? When the state bans dentists from practicing but deems it necessary for abortion clinics to stay open, it's not about your health. When the, the, the state prevents you from buying seeds for your garden but allows you to purchase lottery tickets, it's not about your health. An institution that you know has the ability to destroy all of Earth through you know alleged nuclear warfare should not regulate personal self-defense. You know, an institution that's caught trafficking drugs shouldn't be able to regulate plants. An institution that's racked up $23 trillion prior to coronavirus uh, in debt shouldn't be allowed to manage the retirement fund. Hmm? An institution that was caught spreading STDs should not be allowed to run health care. If people are really concerned about public health and safety, you know, in general, but, you know, they don't care if people, you know, um, eat garbage, drink poison, smoke cancer, and take prescription drugs, but think that toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and masks are going to protect them from the boogeyman coronavirus. You know, this is a special kind of stupid that I, I can't address here. You should ask yourself uh, some, a couple basic questions. 
when did you consent from you know you creating a government to serve you to you serving the government ruling over you if you want to know you know who's in charge just think about who you can and can't criticize well look, before we go any further let me just say this i must be living on a different planet Everywhere I go, and I mean everywhere, the constant refrain I get is that people are sick and tired of dictatorial politicians promoting a climate of fear and alarmism over coronavirus, but they never cite the figures which prove they're either ignorant or duplicitous. You can't have it both ways. They either can't read or they can't tell the truth. Today, Daniel Andrews seems unhappy with the decline in numbers, so he's ordered more testing in regional areas where there are no COVID cases. You get it? looking for new numbers. Gladys Berejiklian is the high priestess of alarmism. And I know for a fact, large numbers of her party and her cabinet, that is on the rare occasions they meet, are fed up with this stuff. Now I've got these figures here. Where are they? In front of me. World health figures. And they're clear. They're clear. I card it with me. Somewhere here, I've got them. And I, they card it, I card it with me wherever I go. There we are. World health figures. And it tells us they're there. 6.3 million infected patients. The serious or critical around the world, front page, 64,000. The rest, 99%, unless these dumb politicians don't understand numbers, the rest are mild. In Australia, it's cost us $360 billion so far for 361 million deaths, uh, for 361 deaths, a billion dollars per life. And in all of Australia, 25 million people, 51 are critical, 43 of them in Victoria, eight in the rest of Australia, critical. Eight, 634 in hospital in Australia, 619 in Victoria, 15 in the rest of Australia, 15, and this is a pandemic? Is there a politician with the spine to tell Australia the truth? And here they are contemplating lockdowns. More threats from Gladys Berejiklian, bars and cafes. Haven't we crushed business enough? Lockdowns. Well, if lockdowns worked, why is there a problem in Victoria? The Lancet Medical Journal, let me repeat, is an independent international medical journal dating back to 1823, a world leader in the publication of papers that have made a crucial contribution to science and human health. The Lancet recently argue, and I quote, in our analysis, full lockdowns and widespread COVID testing were not associated with reductions in the number of critical cases and overall mortality. This is political vandalism. The global death toll from coronavirus is around 750,000. It's not even the 20th deadly killer in the world. In six months, the death toll in Australia is 361. But the average daily death toll in this country, daily, every day, 432. Yet Melbourne is effectively under martial law, masquerading as medical law. This is public policy insanity. And mark my words, coronaphobia will kill more than the coronavirus. And on the lockdowns, let me tell you this. No lockdowns in Sweden, population 10 million, deaths 5,600. New York City, massive lockdowns, population 8 million, deaths 32,000 with 2 million fewer people than Sweden. New Jersey, population 9 million, a million fewer than Sweden, deaths 16,000, three times as many as Sweden. Massachusetts, population 6.9 million, 3 million fewer than Sweden, Coronavirus, coronavirus deaths, 8,300, one and a half times that of Sweden. Yet here in Australia, we've smashed the economy, destroyed the livelihoods of good people. And what have we got to show for it? Nothing except alarmist and hysterical politicians who seem incapable of researching for themselves and calmly presenting the electorate with the facts, which prompts the question, are they seduced by polls? Now they're talking about coronavirus elections. Well, bring it on. There are some of us who won't tire of reminding the electorate of the catastrophe these politicians have created. The voiceless need a voice. The PSYOPs specialists must be proud of themselves. Their plan, of course, is to make us miserable and confused. They know that if we're uncertain and bewildered and frightened, we'll be more pliable, more manageable. And so, in countries all over the world, a psychologist working for the people pulling the strings are treating their citizens like prisoners of war. 
the brainwashing specialists have devised and are constantly updating a barefaced plan to create unending misery. They want us dominated, turned into slaves and controlled. They know that their plan will split the country, though not into equal parts. One part, inevitably the largest, will consist of the weaker, more gullible individuals who will accept any lie they're told as long as it's told frequently and loudly. In the UK, these are the people who swallowed the global warming nonsense and who voted Remain because they believed the lies they were told about the European Union. The rebels, the resistance movement, the people who reject the lies and who see through their government's deceptions, are fewer in number but mostly quite determined. In the UK, these were mostly Brexit voters and they mostly thought the climate change hysteria a massive piece of manipulated pseudoscience. They pose a considerable threat to the manipulators and the plan now is to demonise them and isolate them and to turn the rest of the people against them so that eventually they're broken and will do as they're told. So, for example, those who who dutifully wear masks in shops will be praised as good citizens, as local heroes, as people who care for their community. There's no science showing that mask wearing is of any value, of course, but that doesn't worry the manipulators. Besides, anyone who's symptomatic and likely to spread any infection is already under strict instructions to isolate themselves. The dutiful citizens, compliant in every respect, have been co-opted as part-time police officers and guardians of the state. They've been officially instructed to shame those not wearing masks, to embarrass them and to make them feel uncomfortable and guilty. Everywhere you look, politicians, civil servants and the mass media are busy doing everything they can to create and spread new fears while constantly making sure that the old fears are kept alive. In one of my brainwashing videos I mentioned that in the guidance given to the British government it was pointed out that a substantial number of people still did not feel sufficiently personally threatened. That's us they're talking about. We are not sufficiently personally threatened. Why would they want us to be so threatened? What ulterior motive could there possibly be? Could I have been right back in March when I suggested that one of the reasons for the hoax was to get us ready for the mandatory you-know-what? Their effective clinical winding up of the fear process has been designed to cause the greatest harm It's a barefaced plan to cause misery and despair. When we're under stress, our bodies produce a hormone called cortisol. Lots of stress equals lots of cortisol in our bodies. And guess what? Patients who've got lots of cortisol in their bodies are more likely to die from COVID-19 than people who are calm and relaxed. And of course, since elderly frail people with illnesses are more likely to die anyway, they're the ones who are going to be most affected by stress. So there we are. One of the reasons why the government's been deliberately terrifying us is because they know that we'll have more cortisol in our bodies and they know that the extra cortisol will push those who have comorbidities over the edge. It's it's yet another type of mass murder. All these things are quite extraordinary. No Western democracy has ever worked against its own people so cruelly and with such steely determination. The immediate intention is to make us all frightened and miserable. It doesn't matter if the rebels appear feisty or even angry. The brainwashing specialists believe that in due course they will, if given a little time, succeed in breaking the free-thinking citizens. All around the world, people are fighting their own governments. In the UK, for example, Johnson, Hancock and company have made themselves our enemies just as Hitler and company were our enemies in 1939 and the 40s. Johnson seems to me a gullible, simple-minded buffoon who's dancing on the end of a piece of string being jiggled by Cummings. Hancock seems to me to be just a pompous, half-witted prefect who'd be out of depth if he were a small-town mayor. But they have behind them the billionaire manipulators, global organisations, the Bilderbergers and the might of the world's media. Before them, doing the dirty work for them on a day-to-day basis, they have a small army of common-purpose trained bureaucrats. The thought is always of the state. Everything is done in the name of collectivism. Individual and democracy are as out of date as cloche hats and feather boas. 
The only hope for us, the rebels, is that we can succeed in converting some of the fearful and dutiful citizens to our point of view. To do that, we must counter the misinformation as best we can. We have to hope that in the fullness of time, we'll be able to gather to our side enough citizens so that we become a majority, or at the very least, a sizable and vocal minority. It's tricky, of course, and it's going to get ever more difficult because those of us who see through the absurd lies and spot the manipulations are facing the entire might of the state apparatus, combined with and supported by a compliant media which has willingly suppressed the truth. The reporting of this massive takeover of the world has been a disgrace. The mass market media has been bought and simply does its best to ramp up the fear and drive the yearning for a vaccine as the only way out of the chaos. The media have been paid to promote the lies and by slanting the news and consistently repeating the same threats, they're doing their job very effectively. The British Broadcasting Corporation has always been a propaganda machine and an utter disgrace, as untrustworthy as a junkyard dog, but I'm surprised as how, at how cheaply the rest of the mainstream journalists have been bought. During the lockdown, newspapers and magazines were full of articles by journalists writing about their experiences under house arrest. They described how brave and resourceful they were. They gave us intimate details of their dinner parties and productive business meetings conducted by Zoom, they showed, showed us film of their silly dances and they gave us lists of all the books they'd read, the films they'd seen and the foreign languages they'd learned. They wrote about the coronavirus crime as though it had been a great adventure, a weekend's glamping expedition in darkest Snowdonia or a sleepover with chums. Now the same writers are showing us how to turn our masks into fashion accessories. They're trying to normalise the distinctly abnormal. They're pouring verbal acid on anyone who goes into a shop without a mask. They say nothing about the contradictions, the absurdities and the way the science is being ignored whenever it's considered inconvenient. They lie about the dissenters and when that doesn't seem to be working they simply ignore whatever truths are unearthed. The only radio show I've appeared on for years is the Richie Allen show, a beacon of honesty in a wilderness of deceit. Each morning I wake up thinking I must have imagined what's been happening and then I realise that I haven't been living in a bad science fiction movie. The nightmare in which we're living is true. But is this purgatory or some dark hinterland between life and death? I wonder often how many million people are contemplating suicide as the only way out of this obscene piece of global manipulation. The mass media announced with great excitement that retail sales had rebounded since the end of the lockdown. Imagine that. Shops are open and people can leave their homes. And the chattering classes are surprised, amazed and delighted that retail sales, sales have gone up a little bit. The plan, of course, is to get rid of all high street shops and shopping centres so that we do all our shopping online. In the UK, planning laws have been changed to make it easy to turn a shop into flats. The fact is that the social distancing will help destroy brick or bricks and mortar shops, the absurd markings on the floor, the inconvenient one-way systems which vary from the impractical to the incomprehensible to the downright annoying, the bottles of hand sanitizer placed by the door with the command that the goo be used before entering, the queues outside, the shop staff limit the number of customers within the shop, the growing refusal to accept cash with advice being given to shops on how to take advantage of all the ways to sell things without using cash. I predict, by the way, that the one country in the world where cash will remain popular may well be Colombia, where some businessmen, I'm told, have large stocks of cash to get rid of. And then there's the masks. Oh yes, there's nasty little masks. There are some shop staff who now refuse entry to those not wearing masks. Others insist on questioning customers, demanding details of their medical history. It's impertinent, it's humiliating, and it's going to drive shoppers away. Shop owners and shop assistants who don't realise what's happening will be closed before Christmas. When you shop online, of course, there are no queues, no social distancing commands, no nasty skin sanitizer to give you a nasty skin rash, and no need for a mask. You have to pay by card, it's true, but you probably have to pay by card in a shop now. 
and at home you can make yourself a coffee whenever you feel like one. The global reset requires us all to do our shopping online and the plan is to get rid of all small businesses, especially shops. It's working, damn it, even charity shops are closing their doors. Incidentally, and aside, some shop assistants have been ordered by their bosses to wear masks and some have been very distressed, unable to breathe, especially on warm days. Eight hours in a mask is not pleasant. I can't believe this is legal. I strongly suggest that assistants told that they must wear masks contact their trade union for clarification. And there's no room for fun in our future either. That's why the rules governing pubs and restaurants are so absurd. Anyone wanting to visit a pub will be told to order their drink on a phone app so the government will know what you order. Presumably those of us who wouldn't know an app if it stood up and barked will have to do without. In hotels, guests will be advised to have meals delivered by room service. Oh, what a lot of fun holidays and weekend breaks will be. I feel for all those folk who love putting on posh clothes for dinner, getting all spruced up to sit on the bed to eat your dinner from a tray just won't be the same. There's no room for pleasure in the new world order. We'll be living in high-rise apartments close to our employment. That's the plan. Our shopping will be delivered. That's the plan. Our entertainment will be provided by the box in the corner of the room. No laughing and definitely no thinking. If you think I'm exaggerating, take a look at Agenda 21 and the plans for the global reset. It's absolutely terrifying. And the same sort of things are happening everywhere. In India, over 122 million people lost their jobs in the month of April alone. In Qatar, there is, or there was, a penalty of three years in prison for not wearing a face mask in public. Who can keep up? And in Panama, where the lockdown allows men and women to leave their homes on alternate days, transgender citizens were apparently complaining they couldn't go out on either day. If I put this stuff in a novel, I'd be stoned to death by the readers. It sounds crazy, but it's all true. A few years ago, there were lots of threats about ID cards and iris scans being introduced. I wrote about them and helped campaign against them. The public thought about it, considered the evidence and said a very loud, no, thank you. We need some of that good sense and determination again. They want to destroy freedom and democracy. Well, we can't let the bastards win. We're the resistance. If you meet people who aren't yet on our side, please please ask them to watch my video entitled We Are the Victims of the Greatest Crime in History. It's a good introduction to the whole bizarre study story from the beginning up until today. It would help enormously if you'd press the thumbs up button and if possible leave a small comment. We haven't monetized this channel and there are no advertisements and no sponsors nor will there ever be Clicking the thumbs up button simply, simply helps to keep the video and the channel visible so that as many people as possible can find it. Thanks for watching an old man in a chair and thank you for all your support and encouragement. Please copy and share the videos on Facebook, Twitter, BitChute and other platforms. Let's spread the truth. If you'd like to put on a translation, that would be great. If my videos disappear, please go to vernoncolman.com where you can find transcripts including transcripts of the banned videos. There are many other articles there too. The website's got no ads and no sponsors. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please subscribe to the channel because the videos aren't always easy to find. If you visit mainstream media, please put on messages asking readers to watch these videos to find the truth. Although it may feel like it at times, please remember that you're not alone. More and more, People are waking up to the truth and together we will win this war. Thank you for watching An Old Man in the Chair.